Okay, now we're going to talk about bar graphs, and these are sometimes called bar charts. But we're going to explain this at the outset with an example. So here's a picture of a bar graph. And along with this, we're told that Farmer Bob spent some time sitting on his front porch and recorded all the birds that he saw during his time there. And then the results of his observations are summarized in this bar graph. You can see the different types of birds down here. He saw a certain number of sparrows, finches, crows, hawks, and ostriches. And the number is graphed over here on the vertical axis, the number of birds. So you can see here the number of sparrows that he saw. You can see this line right here would be 17 right there, just two above the 15. So a bar graph isn't too hard to read. And we're given a couple of questions here. We're asked, how many crows did Farmer Bob see? So let's go back and look at the chart here. How many crows did he see? Well, this is five right here along this line. And we're one below that line. So he saw four crows. So we can answer that question pretty easily. How many crows did he see? The answer is four. And then the second one, how many, how many small birds, sparrows, or finches did Farmer, Farmer Bob see? So sparrows or finches. Let's go back and look here. Sparrows is uh, 17 right there. And then the finches, you see here's the 10. The finches is 2 above the 10, so that's 12. So there were 17 sparrows and 12 finches. So to answer the question, how many small birds did he see, we just need to add up the number of each of those. 17 sparrows plus 12 finches comes out to a total of 29. 29 of the birds were either sparrows or finches. All right, now I want to compare a bar graph or a bar chart to a circle graph or a pie chart. And the two graphs serve different purposes. When two different quantities are close to the same size, the difference is easy to discern on a bar graph. Like right here, you can see that this one is just a little bit larger than that one. So it's easy to compare two of the pieces of data on a bar graph. That's nearly impossible to do on a circle graph. It's very difficult to tell if this sector or this sector is larger. So if you need to compare the different data points, a bar graph is usually good for that. The circle graph, on the other hand, is good for seeing how big a piece of the whole one of the sections is. So for example, if you look at the bar graph, you can see that this is the second largest out of the four, but it's hard to tell how big a fraction of the entire thing that is. The fraction of the whole that this is would have to be the size of this piece uh, compared to the size of all four of them together. And that's kind of hard to discern looking at the bar graph. But on the, on the circle graph, you can see that this piece is a little less than half of the whole. You can easily see this piece right here and its size compared to the size of the whole thing. That information is readily seen on the circle graph. So one isn't necessarily better than the other. It depends on how you want to display your data and what aspects of the data you want to make apparent. On these two pictures, what the data is doesn't matter. The point here is that two larger quantities are very nearly the same size. And that's easy to discern on the bar graph. And out of those two quantities, how big they are compared to the whole is easy to discern on the circle graph. Now here's another bar graph. We're shown the population of four villages, and they're named here Waymoot, Tuckboro, Frogmorton, and Whitfurrows. And you might recognize those names. Those are names of little towns in the Shire in the Tolkien, J.R. Tolkien books. But the point here is that sometimes you need to estimate when you're reading a bar graph. These populations are given in increments of 100, you see over here. So it's difficult to read exact numbers off of this. We're asked, what is the population of Tuckboro? So we find Tuckboro here on the graph. 
and we can see that it's over 700 and less than 800, but it's hard to tell how far here between the 700 and 800 mark it is. But we can take a pretty reasonable guess or a pretty good estimate just based on looking. It looks like it's less than 750, but not a whole less than 750, and I'm going to guess that it's about 730 about 730 people, or I guess 730 hobbits in this case, live in Tuckboro. And we're also asked, what is the population of Whitfurrows? So here's Whitfurrows over here, and it's a little over 500, but not a whole lot, maybe around 520. So the point here is that sometimes you have to estimate when reading a bar graph. And so look at the scale. When you're reading it, make sure you take note of the numbers on the scale.